feel to be sitting in that chair and were there any moments in the last 12 months when you wondered whether you might not be sitting in that chair right now? Um, no, 12 months ago I was uh, always gonna come back because uh, my knee wasn't so bad so I never thought you'd miss the Australian Open a year later. Um, but of course after Wimbledon um, the race was on for Australia really, trying to make it for here. Um, I mean I knew I had plenty of time because probably in actual fact if I would have kept everything short it would have taken me four months maybe, but that was just pushing it then, you know, I would have had to take chances and um, test any earlier than what would have been good, but by giving myself six months um, I had enough time, um, except if I had some setbacks and I never had that so actually at the end I was uh, I had plenty of time but uh, so I always felt that I was going to be here so I'm happy I'm here though that means uh, the job was well done I thank my team for that and uh, yeah it was uh, an interesting last six months to say the least And the time come for you to be your own man and take on the world, and you did. But somewhere along the line, you changed. You stopped being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame, like a big shadow. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you've got to be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. They're funny. The girls, I think they know I'm a professional tennis player, but they know there's many of us when they come to the player lounge. I've heard you say that some of the players they think are part of the extended family, Stan yeah, and so yeah, forth. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I make sure they know how incredible all the other players are, but I don't really talk about rankings. They sometimes have asked me, what's your ranking? And last year was 17, now it's two, and Rafa's the best, so I shouldn't be able to beat him because he's number one. And so. I don't know, I don't want to educate them on everything, but they know I sometimes win, but <laughs> sometimes. winning or losing for them shouldn't matter because my attitude should always be the same towards them. Hey, but... Hey, but... Lo dovrebbe attirare a rete, ma non è facile. Non gli puoi mettere la palla in mezzo al campo. Gli... Fatti so.
the rink in a way you never see in a Federer match. 20 out of 23. You, you notice that he started firing some slices there, and Stan's confidence is higher, so he's handling it better. But this is as good as it gets, obviously. But he doesn't want to have to keep hitting. Sh oh yes. I have the final word. And does that. Terrific. The mark of the man. Defensive. What a match. Great hit from Federer. A running wide forehand that flew that fast. His first of the night. And maybe the best point he's played. I mean, that was good movement to get that ball into play. And then how he found that winner. Potro coming cross court. He does it a lot. I just want to be interested to see whether he changed his strategy a little bit. That was unintentional. It was a miss hit. I'll tell you who will like that opening point of the set. David for Yes, well, first of the set. Oh, what a 
beautiful camera angle that was to see that one unfold.